everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing for a very small game. This is a game that literally is about the size of my hand. Looks a lot bigger on screen because I've zoomed in in order to uh, show you guys the details on the front of the box. But this is Mini Diver City. So this game was published by Sphere Games. It's uh, for ages 8 and up. Plays solo as well as up to 7 players, which is pretty crazy. This is a card game. And it runs about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm really excited to check this one out because there is solo play in it. Again, it's quick to the table. It's a card game. And most of the stuff I show on the channel here is quite large, heavy, and or medium to heavy in terms of setup time and, uh, and playthrough and things like that. So this is kind of a cool one in the aspect that it's a little bit smaller, it's going to be a lot cheaper, it's going to be available in stores, and something you guys can go pick up right away if you're interested in the product. So I'm going to show you guys the inside of this box, but just before we do, let's take a look at the box all the way around. So first off, these are the sides of the box and what it looks like. So these are the different uh, art that you'll see, and I'll talk a little bit more about what this game actually is, because that would help out quite a bit for those of you that aren't familiar with this one. So this is Mini Diver City. It says battle against industrial companies trying to exploit the resources for a newly discovered coral reef in this fast-paced cooperative adventure in which your team bands together in order to save the coral reef from destruction. So there's obviously the um, cooperative side to it where you're playing with other players in order to try to uh, you know, take on these uh, different corporations that are trying to exploit the uh, newly found uh, reef that has been found so there's that side of it and there's also the solo side which we'll find out more about once we see the rule book but the general rules are on the back here roughly as, as far as kind of the unique mechanics so it says first off only the other players can see the cards in your hand so that's cool you're playing your cards face outwards uh, second you're revealing an industrialist card from the deck to play the antagonist your options are to close down a hotel, use your diver ability, play a card from your hand to save a species, or tell another player the content of your hand. Interesting. So I'm not too sure. Maybe I'm I'm not too sure how all these interplay with each other just yet, but we'll find out soon. There is 107 cards in this box, 12 tokens, and a rule book, of course. And you can see here with four, it's to save the species before too many of them become extinct. So there's different types of species that you're trying to save. That's the general premise of Mini Diver City. So I'm just going to actually have this thing, see if I can get this thing to focus in with me. There we go. Uh, and we'll just take the top of the box off and see what's inside. There we go. There is some uh, UV spotting on the box cover for those people that are interested. So it kind of makes the title shine. So that's pretty cool. Here is what the inside of the box looks like. So first off, we have the rule book. Again, it's a, it's a very small card game, so it's not going to be a massive rule book that you have to get through. Uh, so it's a, more of a pamphlet that you just open up. So I'll show you guys the front. This is what the front looks like. You've got a little bit of a breakdown of more information you guys can read, the box contents, the corp, and then it starts going into the actual turns of the game. So I'll open this up so you can see the whole thing. So you've got uh, a page for setup. This is what the general setup would look like on the board. You've got your game objectives here. So this is going to be how you win and how you lose. You can pause the screen in order to figure that out. You've got different difficulty levels. So that's good. You can up the difficulty as you see fit. Uh, saved and extinct species. So this seems to be kind of tied to the win-lose condition of the game. So stuff goes extinct. Not good. Stuff is saved. Very good. Gameplay here shows you a little bit more about how you can actually play this. So a couple rules here. Uh, players may never look at their own cards. Very interesting. And players may not talk to one another about strategy. Also interesting. So there's no, uh, even though you're working as a team, you can't do that. Now, if you're playing solo, that those rules will change. So we'll probably find those rules soon enough. Corpora uh, the corporation's turn is here. Diver's turn is here. Additional rules and information. End of the game. I'm just taking a quick look here to see if I can find and spot the solo rules. So now on this side, you've got the end of the game. I'll give you a second so you can actually read that one because that's pretty important. So, oh, there it is. So harder variants, they call it actually. So you can also do the industrialist uh, variant, which allows for more, uh, diffi uh, more difficulty, I guess. The solo variants right here. So play as though you are two different players following the same set of rules as a two player game. Leave your two groups of four cards face down on opposite sides of the table. You're not allowed to look at the species side of the cards from either group, except for when you uh, use the walkie-talkie action, turn over the species card of the opposite player to their species side. 
whenever you draw a new species card, leave it face down until the walkie-talkie action is used again. The rest of the game plays normally. Cool. So they found a way to basically make a thematic uh, adjustment there to allow you to see cards that you otherwise wouldn't be able to using the walkie-talkie. So that sounds kind of interesting. Um, let's see here. 12 different uh, species. So we've got all these different ones, some of which I can pronounce, other ones I can't. So crabs, hammerhead, sharks. Got some fish here, eels, lobsters, all the things you'd expect to try to save out in the ocean. Pretty cool. So that's basically the rule book. Very quick and easy to get through. So it's always nice to have games on the shelf that are not going to take an extreme amount of time to learn and dive into. So that's great. Uh, right here we've got some tokens, which I'm guessing represent all of the different type of species that can either go extinct or the ones that you can save. So we saw those just a few seconds ago. Uh, and we got the cards. So there's going to be a divider here in the center. We got two decks of cards. So as I mentioned when going through the rule book here behind, when I was talking about the solo section, it's obviously going to take uh, a little bit to understand the main rules of the game, to understand how those solo play rules actually apply for the variants. So you'll have to do some research on that to see whether or not this game is for you based on what you see from the main game, which is a cooperative game, and then how the variant, the solo variant, adapts those rules to work for solo play and whether you like that. So uh, I'll leave that up to you because this is strictly just an unboxing, but here we go. So these are the cards. The art is really good, very simplistic in a way in terms of its iconography, so easy to see in other words. The artwork itself is really nice, matches the theme wonderfully, so there's you got all the different... Uh, creatures and things like that the hammerhead shark so you got a bunch of cards for each one here so i'm just going to kind of rifle through all these very very nice artwork it pops very colorful so it's going to look good on the table so that's always good moving right along here all the different creatures octopus clam, or oysters and clams it's got puffer fish of some kind starfish cool that was probably not a puffer fish, by the way. I'm not a uh, marine biologist. I don't know the names of everything here, <laughs> but bear with me. So the backs of the cards are really nice and colorful too. That's one thing I like about the game is uh, card games should be vibrant and this one definitely fits the theme that way. So they have nice little storage solution inside the box. Very easy to throw back in and keep neatly organized. The next deck of cards looks like this. So very, very interesting and different kind of look and feel on this one. So again, this obviously has kind of a save versus extinct track going on here. So however that works with uh, maybe your main objective and tracking things. Looks like you've got all the different creatures here. So you're probably tracking them across these. Maybe with the tokens that were in the box. That would probably make sense. Then you get into these cards. Okay, so what are these? These are maybe the marine biologists, the the, uh, the divers, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, scuba divers is what I wanted to say. Um, so these are the backs of all those cards. So I'm just going to take this group, actually flip it over and show you what it looks like. So very much a different look, but again, very easy to learn. So this looks like the kind of game that would be a very good introductory game to somebody maybe who doesn't play board games and things like that or card games. This is something that might hook them and draw them in based on the theme. So if you're interested in the theme, this looks like something that wouldn't take long to teach and... Uh, if you're playing this solo, if you can get this through in about 15-20 minutes, that sounds pretty cool. Because it's always good to have filler games in the collection, especially when you're trying to just... Uh, usually, like, actually on Monday nights, typically when I play games with friends, or even if when I'm playing off-camera solo, which I do more so than the Monday night stuff, um, it's always nice to have a game after you play the bigger game. So you play one game, it takes two hours or an hour and a half. It's nice when you only have 15 minutes at the end and you're still waiting for people uh, to finish up their night. And you can say, hey, let's get this 15-minute card game to the table, give it a shot, see if it's any good. This is one of those types of games. So it might fill that kind of void in your collection if you uh, like the theme. Of course, you have to look into the gameplay further. I'm not showing that during the unboxing. So... Do your research on that on your own to see whether or not you actually enjoy the gameplay elements and to be sure that the solo side of it is well done. That's something that I can't express enough, guys, when I'm doing these unboxings is uh, I'm strictly just showing you the contents of the game. I haven't obviously played this yet as of the unboxing of this video, so I cannot say whether this game plays well solo or not, but it has solo play, so it's something worth looking into. And if you're, like I said, a fan of the theme, you might be already doing that. So that is pretty much it. Those are all the cards that come in Diver City. That's the rule book. They all have a nice little quick storage area. Very easy to put everything back in the box. Looks like it's quick, easy to teach. 
and uh, also play. So that's pretty cool. This is Diver City or Mini Diver City. So thank you guys so much for your support of the channel. Hope you enjoyed this uh, unboxing. Hopefully it was useful to show you what is inside of this game. And I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, keep on rolling solo.